Folks, how's everybody doing? We're doing a throwback today. We're going all the way back. I know. We're getting ready to launch the Modern Horizons 2 probably in the next couple days, the next week. And you know what? I thought, what better time? What better time to talk about the past? To talk about a throwback of Dominaria's, Dominaria's, Dominatrix for the patron David E. Davis is Rudy. I, I was a big fan. I said, well, with all due respect, everybody. Oh, 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 my bad, my bad. Everybody was a big fan. Everybody loved Dominaria. I'll be honest with you, there, there's no way to not enjoy this product. This, oh my God. It feels like it was yesterday when we were talking about this product. It was in print. And I'll be honest with you all, from the day, even when I offered to the patrons, from the day it was available, it was a non-stop struggle to even keep it in stock. Dean of Iteration starting out, it was, it was just a challenge to keep it available. The entire life cycle of this product was just constant demand. It was unbelievable, folks. We got the old Awakening here. Oh, look at that, folks. Look at that. We got the old Awakening with the Foil Awakening right next to it. That's kind of spicy, huh? And, of course, got a nice little legendary uncommon behind there. It, this product is just such an incredible thing. Like, I can't emphasize enough to you all, like, the history. And, and keep in mind, anybody remember how it ended? Precognition field. Anybody remember how it ended? Yeah, Druid. Well, let me remind you all. We had an abrupt, by the way, Wizards ran out and did not want to do an additional print run before it was even out of standard rotation. This sucker just came and went. And man, were people up in arms. Did I have patrons sending me nasty grams and angry of why can't I buy it? Why'd you abruptly end? I mean, it was just a ripple through the system. And you know, Verdant Force, by the way, a um, couple bucks, I think. Well, used to be a couple bucks. You know, I, I swear there's times Wizards likes that. You know, I think they like a prod going out and ending on a high instead of letting it dissolve into the clothes. You know what I mean? I swear they do that kind of stuff on purpose sometimes. Fall the uh, the old Thrawn, and by the way, these were the uh, when uh, sagas became a really big thing. By the way, this was uh, in the old Dominaria launch, you know. And to this day, I think these boxes are probably sitting just under two hundred on the open market. Which, again, if you don't have this product and you don't have any exposure to it, nice foily swampy. I can tell you right now, you're gonna be even even at today's price of like even at like hundred and eighty a box. You know, even if you got to buy on eBay for 170 plus tax or 190, I'm telling you all, you ain't seen nothing yet, folks. The nurture, that is a beautiful piece of art. Look at that beautiful little, little baby. She's just guarding that baby, and she's also just the the druid of. Look at that, the bow and arrow, just absolute power woman, absolutely awesome piece of art there. Who did that art there? Who, who did that? Uh, Chris, well played, Chris. Good work, man. Anyways. Uh, but yeah, I just don't think people realize. <laughs> Two-headed giant, nice little throwback. And of course, if you haven't noticed by now, if you weren't around a couple years ago, um, this had a lot of throwbacks and kind of little symbolism and lore from very, very old-school Magic 90s stuff. A lot of different symbolism. Ooh, damp. by the way, Damping Sphere. I don't know if it's been reprinted. Probably has five times and 14 secret layers and 1769 ex-girlfriends, but Damping Sphere is an incredible uncommon, by the way. Uh, wind, what was it? Uh, Knight of Wind Grace, not Wind Knight. So, so far, I'm going to be honest with you all, this is not a very good box opening. We are dodging every good card for my patron, David. You are just getting clobbered right now, man. And the old Mending of Dominaria. See the artwork there? Look at that. See the bears? See Karn? Isn't that cool? Oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, sorry, I don't know what's going on, everybody. Like, I, this is like a disappointment. This is a disgrace to Dominaria so far. We're entering a third of the way through the box, and we are just dodging every single good card in the set. I don't know what's going on here. Ah, uh, yes. Yagimoth's Vile Offering. Nice little Yagimoth throwback there. Foily Uncommon Sentinel. And, of course, that kind of looks like my hair, actually. I was going to say, we got the old Rona there, and uh, no, not the virus Rona. We got Rona Disciple of Gix. By the way, Ring of Gix. Gix? Ring of Gix? Anybody? Urzus? No? Okay. Ooh, Grave Tide. Finally, coming through with some action. Probably about a $5 Mythic now. Kind of eroded a lot in value. Our first actual Mythic of the box, finally. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is definitely going to age, become a three to $500 box. It's just a matter of time. If you go on the open market, hey, look at that. Finally, one of the rare land cycles. Hinterland Harbor. Um, if I had to guess, I'm going to guess like a $7 rare or something like that. 
I, I think this is one of those products because I've been watching this one. I, this is one of the items I check once a week on the weekend. And I track how many are available, what's going on with the pricing and the sold listings. And this is definitely, by the way, Druidic. Ooh! Oh! Oh! Anybody? Are you kidding me? What? Wait, wait, wait. Empty one. Okay. Holy smokes. Does anybody know what this is? Helm of the Host. No joke right now, folks. Most expensive rare in the set. This is like a $15, $16 regular rare. The best rare in the set for our second foil rare of the box. Now there, that is, that's how you stage a comeback, folks. That's what we're talking about, man. Eldis, Trickster, Flame, and of course, Warlord Rodden. She's, that is a big woman. You know what? I'd still take her to Taco Bell. Uh, it's, everybody likes a good chalupa. Am I right? Am I right? You can never have enough tacos. It's like the universal language of acceptance and happiness. Ah, uh, Urza's Ruinous Blast. That was a... Uh, had some spice and shenanigans around it a while back ago, but not much going on with that now, Price. Anyways, but yeah, I just, I think people really, and, and I know, everyone says, Rudy, there's so many products. What do you expect from us? We can't keep up with everything anymore. Wizards are just pumping so much stuff out. Ah, Tempest and Dijin. Two infamous cards and ironic words to have a nice throwback to the old Dijin. I think that's the one, is that the one that gets pumped up with islands? You don't, uh, one for yeah, for each island you control. You don't have to tap the islands to, like, pump it like Shiv and Dragon. You just have to have a control of the islands, which is a lot better. That's pretty cool. You don't have to actually pump it with mana. Look at that! Reincarnate! We actually got an old legendary dragon here. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you all. Not the best mythic, though. It's only probably a couple dollar mythic. That's not that great. Did not hold up good financially long term. But, so David, so far, we got some good spice in this old Dominaria throwback. Hey, the old Thrawn... We're keeping in mind, Urza is also back in the day in the late nights at a Thrawn's lens. I believe this is one of those uh, playback, similar, historic, permanent type, you know, color thing. Um, I don't think Thrawn lens. I think this is maybe like a buck or two uh, rare. Not really a home run card. But again, some nice little lore throwback for everybody. Yeah, this this set was probably my favorite standard set. Of, oh my god, a second Helm of the Host. We got one foil and one non-foil. Holy smokes. Hey, look at that. We got a nice stowaway uncommon. Nice chunk of fungus. Sometimes you get some fungus, folks. It happens in life. It happens. Happens to the best of us. You gotta see Rudy in the basement. All right, one, two, and coming through. Ah, the weatherlight captain. There she is in all her beauty and glory. Uh, financially, it's probably like a buck or two. Didn't hold up real good. So we have three mythics so far, all of which are actually gold mythics. Unfortunately, uh, no sign of Mr. T. And of course, I know, I know, no sign of Mox Amber, which is kind of disappointing right now. Wait, what the heck's going on here? Where's my rare? Wait, three uncommons and a planes. Where's the rare? Is it behind it? Oh, there it is. Legend. Okay, I was like, never mind. I forgot some time. That's so weird. So two regular planes. Neither one of them are foil. Anyways, Dijin of the Lamp. Another nice little, um, kind of a throwback. Six drop, five, six flying Dijin. Anybody? Anybody? Mahamadi Dijin. ABU. Anyways. Kind of a throwback to Jin kind of version there. Kind of a slightly better version. Not worth much money, but very uh, very cool in the old story and lore, you know. Oh, Icy Manipulator. Oh, man. Take a moment, folks. One of Rudy's favorite all-time magic cards in history. Ah, uh, yes. The old Josu De La Vest Chalupa Party Pack Leech Lich Knight. Nice little throwback style of the old Lich Leech card. Fortunately, not worth a lot there, but definitely a nice little... Like I said, this, that's what I know a lot of the cards in here, like financial expected value of each box opening is not huge. By the way, did you even notice? Thalads, nice little throwback to Fungus and Thalads. Pretty cool, huh? Urza's. Ah, Sage of Latinam. Anybody? Um, um, Alliances. Ah, the first eruption. I remember that in high school with my ex. Anyways, not worth too much right now, but you know, folks, you can only hope for the future. So we're down to the last third chunk of the booster boxes, folks. And uh, again, eh, average box, you know? Benelish Marshall, kind of a little Benelish hero, kind of a wordplay there. Not a major hit financially, but see where you guys notice like how many rares and cards just have really cool, kind of unique throwbacks and neat little symbolism. That's what. Just, oh, oh, Mr. T, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. T, hero of dominatrix by far. I believe this is a thirty to forty dollar mythic. Boom, best card in the set, folks, and some fungus to go with it. Congratulations, David. You hit for our fourth mythic, Mr. T. Oh, man. that's all. Even though we haven't gotten a Mox Amber, you know what? We hit Mr. T, the man himself, the legend of all legends, Mr. T, man. Best of the best, folks. 
Guy's blessing. Love that sword in the artwork, by the way. Hey, Steel Leaf Champion. Um, I always thought this was a really cool, kind of a decent power. I know it's like a $2 green rare, but... And again, being an elf kind of archetype, and, and I always thought that was a good card. Just my opinion, though. Again, by the way, did you even... Sorry, let me just go back there. If this was printed years ago, seriously. It's a three drop for a 5-4! Are you serious? Like, old school Rudy is like, are you kidding me? I know, it, it's three green, not one green and two colorless. I get it, it's a little bit more difficult, especially, you know, you have to have a lot of devotion to green. I get it, but still... Pretending I knew how to play the game. Like, old school Rudy's going, goodness gracious. Ah, the Dread Shade. <sighs> I'll be honest with you guys, it's not worth much. Kind of a block card. Uh, the old Human Knight, foily uncommon. And that is it. Planes and, of course, a little Sapling token. Yeah, the Dominaria, man. I did a lot of box openings of this a long time ago. Never got old. Ooh, Master Wizard. Haven't seen you in a long time. I mean, financially, got nuked. But man, hey, you got a Mr. T emblem too. They used to be worth a couple bucks. So we are at a five mythic box here, you know? I'm going to say this. Is, oh, another damn thing's here there. Hey, Bombardment. Nice little throwback rare. And of course, the old Keeper of the Flame. The foil, not foily. I'm sorry. Regular uncommon. So last few packs of this actually turned out to be a pretty solid box opening. We got a five mythic box, including Mr. T. Hey, Clifftop Retreat, our second rare. By the way, these rare land cycles, these are like five, seven bucks a land, man. Those are, don't underestimate that, so kind of interesting, the financial value is actually held up pretty solid. I don't know if it's just because it's in this particular product, or they've really kind of tough to get. Journey Mage! Nice foily common. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Arc Mage Eternal. You guys remember this guy? This card's out of control, man. Like, I know it has no financial value, but I just remember that card, and I just remember thinking, goodness gracious. Anyways, sorry. I just remember thinking there could be shenanigans with that never happened. Beautiful, beautiful saga artwork. Nice conjecture. By the way, I say that ten times fast, am I right? Probably a buck or two. Last two packs, folks. We got one and two. We're going to wrap this video up. I'll kind of ramble for a minute here at the end. Give you all my opinion of what the heck is going on. Hey, Woodland Cemetery. Look at that art, though, folks. No joke. Look at that flipping art. And, of course, nice little uncommon. Ending the video of our nice Dominaria throwback. What year is it, 2018 or 19? Oh my god, 2018? It's mid-2021. By the way, Juggernaut with the new arts. Oh, Voice of Plenty. All you angel-loving decks out there. Absolutely ridiculous card. Still actually, no joke, still like a $4 rare. Still, I, at least last I checked. So, overall, David, you know, you hit a helm, and you, one of your foil rares is a helm. That alone is like $50 of value from the box. You got Mr. T sitting at a whopping $30, $40. Bucks. I mean, those couple cards alone, you're at already $70 in financial value from three cards. I mean, it's tough to call the box a bad box, even though we didn't hit like a Mox Amber. Still, you got a couple of the rare land cycles. We got Dr. T coming in through the basement. We got, you know, you got the Helm Rare and the Foil Helm Rare. It's pretty potent, man. This was a pretty, this actually, it felt a little, didn't feel like it, but now that I'm thinking about it, this actually turned out to be a pretty solid box, everybody. So, that's all I have to say about it. At the end of the day, God, time flies, man. You know, everybody, mid-2021, I swear it feels like a couple months ago, I was doing all the box openings for Dominaria, you know? This was 2018, man. 2019. 2020 disaster dumpster fire. Middle of 2021. We're going on three years. That's why I tell everybody, you know, when you live your life and you're busy and you're really doing what you enjoy and you're hustling and spending time with people that are important and working hard and not blowing your money, and you got the right people around you. I mean, man, time just, you know, I know, well, at least when I was younger, I'm sure a lot of you all were the same when I was younger, and I was a kid and a teenager and everything. Dude, time creeped by. I complained always how slow. I feel like I was always waiting for the bell, the next class, the next period, the next grade level. When you're a kid, time creeps, man. But you find what you're supposed to be doing in this world that you're passionate about, whether it is, whether you're digging holes and planting carrots, or slinging cardboard and not getting haircuts like me and living in basements of your ex, you know, it's just, time flies. I mean, I still can't, I still feel like I joined YouTube last year. And I'm like, Rudy, you've been on YouTube since 2016. It's mid-2021. Do you realize that? That's 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's five and a half years. Oh my God. 2,000, like 400 videos later. Yeah, that's just how life works. And that's, you know, the reason I'm doing all that and I'm rambling on this is because, again, 
everybody always says to me, Rudy, uh, what's the point? You got to buy these sealed boxes. You got to wait years to make the money. You got to wait. The average person has to wait two, three years to double their money after the product goes out of print. So you don't even get any time ticking on your side until it goes out of print. Then once it goes out of print, usually you got to wait three years after being out of print to even make some money. And people are like, oh, it's not worth it. Life's too short. Blah, blah, blah. YOLO. GME the moon. Diamond hands. Rock and emoji. Woo! You know. And I'm sitting here going, folks, this is your reminder that you have no idea how fast this world goes by. And again, all of us have very short life expectancies when you really zoom out and you realize the size and scope of time itself. Of how far things have come from just the dot-com thing of 2000. The 2008 crash. Now the 2020 virus disaster. I mean, we're already heading to 2022. And you don't realize that until you slow down, you go outside, you get a lawn chair, and you go yell at some cars that go by, you know, and you realize that life is short, folks. Make sure you're doing what you enjoy. Make sure you have people around you that are not bringing you down.